now. Oh my Lord, forgot earlier. Um, so this is an open forum. It is being recorded now and it will be posted on our website. So we do not wish for you to divulge too many specifics about your, stu about your student. Um, and if you think of anything after this call, uh, just know that you can text me uh, at the number I give you or uh, even better email us at orientation at csum.edu and I'll put that in the chat as well. Um, if you have questions that are not related to today's subject or topic, uh, please hold off on those because we are bringing you other experts throughout our time together in the month of August and you'll be able to ask those questions later. Um, if anything is um, urgent, again, you can uh, email me at orientation at csu.edu for that as well. Uh, and with that, it is my pleasure to invite uh, my colleagues to introduce themselves and uh, take us through their presentation. I'm going to go on mute and uh, hand it over to Lennon. All right, wonderful. Uh, thanks, Vanita. Um, so my name is Lennon Prothero Jones. I am the director for Residence Life. And so uh, you'll probably get a lot of me talking through this presentation as I blitz us through towards the end for the whole group. But with us today, um, uh, first is Melinda Balfour. Melinda, you want to introduce yourself? Hi, everyone. I'm Melinda Balfour, and I'm the lead resident life coordinator here on campus. I work really closely with Lennon and I've been at the institution for about seven years. And then also with us is our uh, staff robot, Madison Dack. Maddie, you want to try to say hello again? Yeah, how's this? Oh, much better. Okay, great. Maddie's back. Okay, sweet. Uh, yeah. Yes, my name is Madison. I'm the cadet housing director for the upcoming academic year. I'm studying mechanical engineering. I'm going into my uh, senior year here at the school. Absolutely love it. I'm also on the women's soccer team and uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Maddie. Um, so awesome. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and yes, I can share my screen. Uh, hopefully everyone can see a slide that says housing and residence life. And it, are the words at the bottom as well? Are you able to see that? That's a cool new feature in, in uh, PowerPoint, like first time I've seen it. So uh, yay for updates. Um, so yeah, we're gonna go through, we'll go through these slides. Um, we have several slides here, but uh, as we wrap up, we'll have it, hopefully many of your answers are, or many of the questions you have will hopefully be answered during the presentation and then we'll cover the rest at the end there. All right, so um, you got to meet a couple of us, but our Residence Life team is a bit larger. So uh, I mentioned myself, so I oversee kind of the entire area uh, of residence life, particularly around the, uh, and, and when we say residence life, we're talking about the cadet engagement side of the living on campus experience. So that's a lot of the services that we provide in our halls. Um, Melinda's here, she's our lead residence life coordinator. Um, a little bit more unique with Melinda's role, she does directly oversee a residence hall, but in her lead capacity, she oversees some of our pr protocols and systems such as, um, uh, room selection, which I'm sure everyone wants to hear about, uh, room selection and our room assignments, um, as well as uh, our overall application system. So she, that's an area she oversees. Um, we have uh, two more residence life coordinators, Miranda and Matthew. Uh, they aren't able to be on the call today. Uh, Miranda's been with us uh, since this last academic year, and Matthew will be joining us actually for his first academic year this upcoming fall. Uh, we also have a, a position that we call the Commandant in Residence. This is a partnership with uh, ourselves in Residence Life and our Commandant's office. Uh, and this year we have the Deputy Commandant, Jimmy Moore, living on campus. And so um, uh, he kind of operates similarly to what a Res Life coordinator does in the Res Hall side of things, but he also has the full position of the Deputy Commandant uh, uh, on campus. So that'll be a great partnership and opportunity for us this year. Uh, Maddie, you all got to meet just a second ago. Um, uh, is in our uh, newly titled cadet hall director role, as I still have student up there because I forget things sometimes. Um, but our uh, this position for Maddie is actually uh, kind of like a paraprofessional grad student type role. Uh, she works with us as a professional staff member, uh, offering insights, sits in on our meetings, and really serves as a representative from the cadet side, from our our 
cadet leader roles, as well as our, our greater cadet body. So that is a great opportunity for us to have Maddie on our team. And, and the, the folks I just mentioned, the six of us essentially make up the Residence Life leadership team. Uh, uh, with that, we also have 23 residence hall officers. If you are familiar with university settings, this is essentially the position that is the RA role on our campus. So um, that's kind of how that works. And, um, and those R RHOs are spread across our multiple residence halls. So um, the first thing to talk about and really just to cover to make sure that everyone's aware and we'll, we'll get a little bit more chance to, to talk about this later, but uh, there is a live on requirement here at Cal Mary time. This is part of uh, being consistent with um, other institutions in the maritime industry. Almost essentially every academy that's out there has a sort of live on requirement for their full four years. Um, this is not a housing policy is one of the things we really try to stress to folks. This is a university policy. So this is, if you go to the university's policy, policy page, it's listed there. Um, and it's from well before my time here on campus. Uh, and I don't think it'll change anytime soon. There are some scenarios where a cadet can live off campus. We'll talk about those towards the end. But um, I just want to express that most, you assume that if your cadet is coming in straight out of high school or maybe transfer student and they're around 20 years old, odds are they're going to live on campus all four years, five years potentially of their academic experience. So um, just be aware of that. And that's standard for our entire population. Um, some of our biggest takeaways really that we want to have folks have in the resident residential experience, this would apply to any university. Like I've, I've been working in residence life for 16 years and many of these components are directly applicable to why residence life or our dorms or residence halls exist across the nation. And, and it's really about, you know, enhancing that sort of learning and the academic experience, putting them closer to class, um, developing their life skills, helping them figure out how to be a member of that community. Um, and I think that that directly leads to that personal growth as well as social development, but those interpersonal skills. And that's something that we try to help foster, uh, whether that be how we facilitate their roommate um, uh, agreements or disagreements, depending on the day, uh, helping them navigate um, uh, the, the broader community, we have cadets who come here from all over the, the nation as well as all over the world. And so really trying to make sure that we're creating an environment for folks to be able to come back, have a bit more comfort, be a bit more stress-free after class, because class can be intense. But ultimately, we always want to do our best to provide a safe environment for our students um, across the board. So that, that is something that I feel like in my profession, I could take the slide anywhere in the nation, and it, it would be applicable. Uh, next, we're going to talk a bit about the residence halls. We'll go a little bit more in depth with our first year communities that where, where cadets may live. And then um, uh, we'll kind of give a brief overview for two other halls. Now, one that's not going to be in this presentation is the training ship Golden Bear. Uh, in years past, pre-pandemic, pre we would normally have our first year cadets split time between upper residence hall and the Golden Bear. Uh, which is our, our ship. It's over this shoulder here in my little photo, and it's right behind Melinda in her picture. Um, uh, this year, we we won't we will continue not to have cadets live on the ship. We want to be able to pre preserve it as a learning space, and we didn't want to increase chances of exposure uh, for folks as we're still navigating the pandemic. So with that in mind, um, the ship, even though it's out at sea right now, it'll come back, get its deep clean be a classroom essentially, but we will not have cadets reside on the ship uh, during the academic year. Um, so just be aware of that. So we'll hop in and talk a bit more about upper residence hall, which is pictured here and what comes with that. Um, so as I mentioned a second ago, it is it is a, a, a first year exclusive uh, residence hall. So um, outside of our RHOs that live in the building, um, Upper Residence Hall is only for first-year cadets. We have about 200 cadets who will live in, in uh, Upper Res this year. It's um, much like would be consistent with all of our halls. It is a furnished double occupancy room. Um, so they will have a roommate. Um, all the furniture and everything is already in there. We do have gender-specific uh, uh, hall communities. So though um, uh, we, don't, um, we don't have like every other room, 
mixed gendered. We have a wing on the second floor, which for any female cadet who's a first year cadet will reside on that particular wing with their dedicated restroom area. And then um, our male cadets, male identified cadets would reside on um, their separate wings or floors separate from them, but they can freely still share things like our common rooms, laundry room, other spaces uh, that are referenced here. Uh, and then additionally, uh, Upper Residence Hall houses our housing office. So this is where myself and Melinda are currently sitting, uh, is in the housing office in this building. And this is kind of where every cadet will need to come if they needed assistance from us um, directly. And so it's you know, immediate access primarily for the larger number of our first year cadets. I would say is the best way I could describe what is a traditional style residence hall is uh, community living. So that means that um, there's no private bathroom. Um, the only real private space is their dedicated room with them and their roommate. We do only share up to two people in a room. We don't do triples or quads on our campus. And so um, that's kind of how that space is navigated. A lot of the uh, recreational spaces all shared common communal, communal space. So no private living rooms or anything like that, if you haven't been able to see our campus. Um, another special feature of Upper Residence Hall is also we house the barbershop. Um, though in the recent year, we've actually expanded the uh, grooming and uniform standards uh, for the campus. I'll let the meeting that happens with the Commandant's office go into great detail about that. We won't get into that much detail here, but for cadets who need a haircut, there is a free option for them to get a haircut here in this building. Um, they just have to go through the sign up system that they have set up for the barbershop to get that experience. Um, and so, yeah, that's pretty much upper residence hall. And then next, I will, oh, before I move to the next slide, the cadets who will most likely be assigned to upper residence hall are our first year cadets who are a bit more in the traditional block. So, what that means is, um, uh, we get a lot of what the university views as first time on campus cadets, which are our transfer students or potentially um, uh, folks who are coming uh, out of the military or other backgrounds coming into the university. They will likely not be directly in upper residence hall uh, by and large. So uh, we can get the disparity. Sometimes you have a cadet who's 17 years old being a first year cadet on campus, and then you have a cadet who is coming out of the military and maybe 26 they're not gonna be roommates <laughs> and sharing the same space. So uh, Upper Residence Hall is primarily for the fresh out of high school, year or two out of high school, transfer student, year or two out of high school window. Um, uh, our sub 21s is probably another way to look at it, who will primarily be assigned to Upper Residence Hall. Which brings us to the other residence hall we'll use for first year cadets as well, which is McAllister. Um, McAllister is slightly up the hill from, uh, from Upper Residence Hall. And it is, uh, as I list there at the top, it's a mix of both first year cadets as well as returning cadets. Um, it's a bit more what we call suite style uh, living. And so um, the floors that are dedicated to our first year cadets are almost exclusively first year cadets. And then our returning cadets are on different floors outside of our second floor, which has a mix of returning and um, first year female cadets on the second floor. Um, but uh, by suite style, what that means is it's slightly different from, from upper res where uh, let's say an entire wing of about 30 or 40 cadets may be using the same common restroom in upper residence hall. Suite style means that there's two rooms per bathroom that they share. So um, that means uh, the cadets in McAllister will get assigned, um, uh, you know, them and their roommate, their neighbors, uh, same gender identification will be assigned a shared bathroom that they'll utilize. Um, in both cases, the upper residence hall, as well as McAllister, those restrooms are cleaned by custodial services. The frequency is different depending on the hall. Custodial services will clean upper residence hall twice a day, but then for McAllister, they do, uh, I think it's every other day, depending on the restroom. So like some restrooms are on the like Monday, Wednesday, Friday set, Others are on the Tuesday, Wednesday, oh, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday set. And then um, Sunday is primarily kind of like, depending on work orders, a spot check uh, across the board to make sure everyone has their, their uh, toilet papers and, and paper towels refilled and everything. So um, 
there is a bit more privacy in those spaces, but also a little more expectation for them to maintain their space due to the frequency of the fact that that hall has about 50 different bathrooms in it. So um, that's quite a lot for our custodial staff to clean on a daily. Um, once again, all the rooms are furnished, double spaced, and then they also have the common rooms, uh, TV lounge, study facilities, laundry facilities, which are shared across the community. So that's that's a shared experience in McAllister. Uh, so it's not completely private room spaces. Uh, all of our halls have community spaces, but they have a bit more um, uh, autonomy about how they navigate their, their shared bathroom area. And so uh, this would just be a one slider. Lower residence hall is one of our upperclassmen halls. It is traditional style, um, though a smaller number of persons. So in this particular residence hall, this is uh, something that they'll be able to select going in, in, into the 2023, 2024 academic year. And they'll be able to select this residence hall, rooms furnished, double rooms again, but then they uh, the showers on those floors are by floor. And it's only like about eight rooms per floor. So you're talking maybe anywhere from 16 to, to 14 to 16 people, depending on some of the styles of the rooms, uh, 14 to 16 people per showered space. And those are cleaned daily like upper res is. So um, uh, that's, and that's the closest residence hall to campus. It's between where upper res and the university is. So it's the closest residence hall to campus. And then our, our final residence hall that we'll refer to uh, today is Maritime North. It's on the furthest edge of campus. So it's actually right as you enter campus. It's right along the road there. It's another one of our upperclassmen only halls. And then um, it's a bit more unique. It's actually a converted motel that used to be right off campus that the university purchased and converted to student housing. So we do have common rooms, common laundry, things like that there. But it is the only location that has uh, the private restroom. So this is where the, the two roommates in the room, because it was a hotel or motel, have their own restroom dedicated to their, their space there. So um, uh, regardless of the residence hall, every residence hall has RHOs that uh, work there, as well as, as you saw with our residence life coordinator position, a different residence life coordinator, as well as the, com uh, the commandant and residents live at one of, each one of them lives at one of these locations and oversees the staff there. So that's kind of how our staff splits up and supports these areas. So that means if like a fire alarm goes off, like our live-in staff are present and able to support in addition to any other services that are able to come and assist with folks. Um, this brings us to our off-campus petition. This may apply to some of your cadets depending on if they meet the criteria below there. Um, this is uh, a part of the university's policy. So in the singular policy that talks about the requirement to live on, these exemptions are listed. Uh, they are if a person is of 26 years of age by August 1st of the academic year. So that's yesterday. So if your cadet is already 26 yesterday, then they would be eligible for off-campus petition. If they turn 26 on January 5th, they would not be eligible uh, for off-campus. Once again, policy I didn't write, but that is the rule, and I will do my best to follow it for my job's sake. Um, uh, if a cadet, uh, regardless of age, if they are married or have parental custody, they are then also eligible. Now, what's important here is this does require documentation. There's a whole process for submitting this, but if your cadet is married or if you are the cadet and you're on the call and you are married actively and you are capable of, of being eligible to live off campus if you so choose, uh, we don't have family housing, so there would not be an opportunity for the married partner to live on campus with them um, unless they potentially happen to be a, no, no, there was no pathway for for that. So um, that wouldn't occur. And we don't have an option for children to reside on campus. I would say there's a difference between a guest at times and not, but we'll talk about that in just a moment when we get into some of our policy stuff. But in general, um, if someone is the, the primary parent with custody, they could be eligible to live off campus as well. If someone's already a military veteran, that means that they've served their full term and have essentially on the GI Bill, then they would be eligible for living off campus. If they've already achieved their married time license, um, as that is the primary undergrad experience, this mostly applies to our, our grad graduate school programs. So our grad students don't have to live on campus. Um, medical accommodation. This one I want to be a little more specific about. 
when we say medical accommodation, this means that a cadet says, I have this need, and then the university tries to meet that need. If we realize that we cannot meet that need, then they may be given an, an accommodation to live off campus. So uh, we've had cadets say, hey, something happened to my ankle. I don't think I can walk around campus. I should live off campus. That's just a random example. Um, if, if the university is like, oh, but we've got you know, the shuttles that can pick you up from Maritime North, which is, which is furthest away from campus and get you to class, then that would have met that accommodation. So um, uh, just be mindful of, and that's a broad, there's a lot of opportunities or options under medical accommodation. And then the last one is financial hardship, uh, and that's strictly through financial aid. So uh, um, there is a committee that oversees this. It is not singularly any one person's decision. Uh, that committee is made up of members of the Res Life team, uh, financial aid office, the disability and accessibility services office, um, and then um, a couple of members of the Division of Cadet Leadership and Development. So uh, there are several folks who look at each person's request, oversees the paperwork, and make sure that a person who is being granted their petition has been properly vetted. So uh, I mentioned a bit about you know the RHOs earlier. Uh, our Res Life community is really about gaining that access and giving more resources for the cadets' individual success. Um, and so in the res hall and the campus events, like there are a number of activities that are, are gonna be sometimes exclusive to anyone who lives on campus. We, as we mentioned a second ago, some cadets don't live on campus, but then also for all of the events that occur on campus, just it, it is right there, you know, just a few stairs away um, for them to be able to access uh, any of the events and resources uh, that the university provides. Um, and then additionally, going into this year, uh, in addition to our events and programs that we'll have going on, um, all RHOs will do kind of one-on-ones with their residents. So every about every six weeks or so, um, they'll have a sit-down one-on-one with their their one-on-one uh, -on -one meeting with their RHO, kind of just seeing how their semester is going. That's a that's a particular intentional check-in that's independent of like the casual high buy. So like let's say Melinda was my resident and I was an RHO. I may see Melinda every day. I may see her at the food court. I may see her in class. But that's not a conversation on really seeing how she's doing, what support she may need, how things are going with her roommate, um, and, and and what is she enjoying? Is she having fun? Like, has she gone to any events? Has she gone to sporting events? Those sorts of things. So we'll do that with all cadets, um, regardless of year. So um, that'll be an experience that's just a part of our Res Life community this year and can definitely help if we need to check in about how roommate situations are going. Um, I mentioned a second ago about our team that live on site. So we have a few tiers of support. I won't read all of these out, but the, the short version of it is for our, our entire campus community, Residence Life provides 24 seven coverage. That means that anytime any cadet lives on campus, there's at least two people that they're able to call and receive support from. Um, uh, in our in our tiers of, of support. Uh, our first tier is the cadet tier. So we have, um, that's our RHOs. Uh, and during the day, that's usually going to be uh, calling the housing office. And we have cadet staff who work in our housing office who can support doing lockouts or going to meet them somewhere if they're having some issues with a facilities issue. Um, and then at the evening, every evening from 8 p.m. to 8 a.m., and then 24 hours over the weekend, we have an RHO on duty that's per residence hall. And they're walking around with a duty phone that can be called uh, middle of the night if necessary, and the RHO can come and support that cadet. Um, depending on what's ever taken place, the cadet may escalate that situation to our pro staff. We do have pro staff on duty 24 seven. So once again, that's every day of the year, all breaks, all holidays, there's always someone on duty at our pro staff tier. That's a rotation between the all the coordinators and the commandant and residents to provide that support. Um, and, and we kind of rotate Monday to Monday uh, is how we treat our week of on-call. And then, um, in my case, in my role, I'm on call all year long, barring me being officially on vacation, um, which is rare, but I'm on call essentially 24 seven. So anytime the pro staff runs into an issue and they're a little bit more worried, high level incident, or they're just very confused, I can support them at that tier. And then even above myself, 
um, throughout the year, we also have the admin on duty. That's usually made up of a rotation between our VP of Cadet Leadership and Development, the Dean of Cadets, as well as the Commandant of Cadets, who um, is not the Deputy Commandant, but the person above that role. And so they serve in a admin on call for the entire campus. So really the Res Life side stops with me of response, but if there were a larger event occurring on the greater campus, that group would support the greater campus and they cover when I'm not around for Res Life. So um, that is how your cadets are supported. That if something is going wrong or they need any kind of help, uh, we work very closely with uh, a lot of our colleagues um, to provide support to them. Uh, I want to leave as much time for questions as possible, and I've only got three more slides, so I'm excited about where we're at. Um, FERPA and confidentiality. You may encounter this topic throughout multiple sessions for various reasons. I, I know when you get to a health center presentation, they'll likely talk about HIPAA and that what governs their practice. But essentially, I, I want to express this to families and, and more so the line at the bottom, which is really saying that, um, you know, there's there are federal guidelines that allow us to share or not share certain information. Um, uh, this typically is applying to non-emergency scenarios. Um, and our, I know the definition of an emergency can vary from family to family, person to person. So I want to give a light definition so that we can all operate from a, a shared concept, which is essentially we can talk to you about process, but we likely can't talk to you about the details of your cadet. So what that means is, let's say Melinda and Maddie were roommates and, um, you know, Melinda's parents wanted to complain about Maddie. I can't talk. My staff can't talk about the individual portions of Melinda's story or Maddie's story, but we can talk about what our room transfer process or our room mediation, roommate mediation process is, and we can encourage you to send your cadet to us so that we can assist them. Um, that's not because we don't like you. That's not because we don't want to support. It's because we are federally mandated not to share those details. And I'll give a, a brief example as to why that's significant. We don't know that you're really the parent. <laughs> you may have, you may know their maiden name or middle name, or you may know their address and their birth date, but so could someone who just knows too much about them as well. And what we wouldn't want to do is to give more information or even confirm that your student lives here without it being the right thing. Now, a, 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 there are opportunities for families to seek FERPA waivers. Uh, with their students, and there's a whole process for that. I won't get into that because we don't oversee that form. But what I can say is if, if you want to be a part of something and it's just about your student, if your student wants to call you while you're meeting, while they're meeting with us, we are more than welcome to facilitate a dialogue with you on the phone because then we know that they've opted into calling the right person. So it's not saying there isn't a pathway, just if you call us alone or you email us just yourself, we may be very limited on what we can share. And I wouldn't want that to come off as poor service on our end. We just wanna protect your cadet. And so um, lastly, behind the scenes, this is just a little bit of detail. It's a little bit in the weeds, but it's important to express how we can best serve and what limitations we also have is that um, I know one of my colleagues is hoping to be here today, Scott Kern, um, but he's not gonna be able to join us but uh, we are a bifurcated department. And so what that means is uh, I've worked in residence life positions where the university housing and residence life is a singular office. And in that scenario, that means that if you speak to the director of residence life or the director of housing, the everything that goes into that building is under that one person. That is not how we're structured here. My role in, as a director of residence life oversees what I would say the human element of living on campus. So we oversee all the room assignments, transfers, programs, events, crisis response, you know, um, all of that stuff is what the Residence Life team does. Facilities, custodial is overseen by two other offices on campus. One is the Maritime Corporation, which oversees our custodial and some of the lighter maintenance in our halls. And then uh, campus facilities oversee some of the larger projects such as plumbing and those things. Um, we work directly alongside them, but they aren't in my wheelhouse to direct, if that means. So I can share, hey, we've been made aware of the situation, 
All cadets have the ability to submit work orders. We have the ability to submit work orders of if we see an issue, we can just call them quicker. If there's a, like a flood happening or something like that, we can say, hey, the water's flowing and I can call the direct manager. Uh, so that's why it's really important for people to call us and let us know things. But outside of that, it's not a singular office. So if there are facility issues, custodial feedback, we can take it and we'll do our best to distribute it wherever it needs to be best. Um, and then lastly, uh, as I mentioned with crisis response, we work closely with everybody on campus. And this is not an exhaustive list of everyone we work with. We work with the academic advisors. Obviously I listed UPD, which are police department, um, uh, our health services, our counseling services, our confidential advocate, Title IX office, everybody. Obviously we have a direct partnership with the commandant's office, the conduct team. So there is there really isn't anyone we don't actively work with on campus. If you're a bit lost, a bit unsure where to go, feel free to reach out to us, send your cadet to us, and we can get them the name, direct office of who could best serve them, depending on what the need is. And with that, at about solid 30, 31 minutes in, I am able to say we are at our final slide. Um, during the academic year, as I shared before, our office hours are for 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. You could get a person in those block of, blocks of time, um, but our pro staff will typically head out closer to about, well, if it's Melinda, 7.30 p.m., but the rest of us usually will head out around 5. Um, the best contact for your question is always going to be our main housing email. Because much like I just shared, you can email me the director, but if it's an assignments question, I may defer that to Melinda, who does our assignments. So I'm just going to end up sending it to her anyway. If you send it to housing, we all see everything there, and it'll get picked up by the appropriate person. That is our phone number, and that is it. We are ready for questions. Thank you, sharing. Lennon. Wow, that was, you need a break and need some water props. No, I'm good. I'm good. We're um, <laughs> So I will field the questions just to keep it kind of uh, efficient, if that's okay. Um, and the first one is how much does it cost to do laundry? Uh, I think it's, the, the best way I could describe it, it's $3.50 for an entire load. So uh, one of them is $1.50, the other one is $2. I don't remember which is which. Um, but uh, it is about $350, $350 a load. Goodness. <laughs> That's some fancy clothes. $3.50 a load. Thank you. Um, is there a list of items suggested to bring for the dorms? Um, Melinda, you want to take that? Yes. So on our web page, if you just type in housing or residential life, you'll get to our website. And under the information for all students, we have information about what to bring, um, depending on what your year and in which hall you are currently in. Additionally, when our room assignments email go out or, um, later this week, we'll also include the link for you to find that information as well. And if you have any other questions, feel free to give us a contact um, email. You can contact us at our email at housing.csm.edu. Um, I've even cheated a little and just put in what to bring in the search uh, on our website and it brings the same thing up. Um, will room inspection happen for cadets? Yes, so there's two types of um, walkthroughs that take place. Uh, one that occurs for our first year cadets a bit more frequently is not housed in our office, which is the, it's housed out of the commandant's office, which is a sort of a Friday walkthrough for first year cadets. Um, I think they did it weekly the first semester in the fall and then bi-weekly in the spring. That's how they did it last year. Um, that would be the best question to ask the commandants on if they'll continue that practice, but I can speak to what that's what they did last year. We do a mid-semester health and safety walkthrough mid uh, about, I would say sometime around mid to late October, and then again, mid March. And those are both strictly like cleanliness and wellness intentional checks to see that the rooms don't smell funny, that uh, they're taking care of themselves. Part of the reason why we only do it once a semester is because inherently between either the one-to-ones are passively, since the RHOs live on the floors, they will have 
indirect encounters and can always address cleanliness issues along the way. But we at least give ourselves benchmarks to confirm, hey, you're about, you know, essentially midway through the semester, right, right before, we usually kind of wait till right after midterms <laughs> to say how you hold up afterwards. So it's, it's, it's an intentional check, but it's also a cleanliness check. Um, none of the walkthroughs that I just described are militaristic. And, and so what I would frame by that is saying is if you watch a, a film and people are at a regimented, you know, academy and they're they're checking the, the bed mattress, how you how you fold the bed how, or how you fold the blankets and tuck the sheets and things like that. None of that is a part of our walkthroughs. We're talking general cleanliness and taking care of their, their space, hygiene based type walkthroughs. Thank you, Lennon. Um... What are the gym hours? Are you aware of that at all? Uh, I cannot say with confidence the gym hours. And, I, I, and, and the one thing I would add is maybe subject to change. I think one of the things that we've been very sensitive with with most of our services this last year have been to follow health guidance. So I think there might be early limitations. Um, and then also uh, oftentimes, uh, most of our services also have cadet staff roles. So some of those will be limited at the start of the year due to uh, positions being offered for cadets to work some of these locations. So um, I would say subject to change, even if I did give you an answer today, but I don't have one. Um, but uh, I know that it was pretty regular hours uh, last year. So the gym is technically open. So it will be open this academic year. Thank you. Do students have to move out between semesters? Yes. And um, the way I would describe it is uh, in the past for first year cadets, they normally would check out completely in the fall. So, and that that's because they would switch locations in the spring. So those who lived in upper res would take all their items home, come back and check fully into the ship and vice versa. Um, because we aren't swapping halls, they're able to leave their items, but they will need to check out essentially a day after the last day of exams um, in the fall, which is, I, I don't quote me perfectly on it, but we'll say about December 20th, whatever that last day of exams is, the following day is when they'll check out and then they'll move back the day before classes resume. So that is a Sunday, the second week of January, you know, they'll move back right back then. And I apologize for not having those dates readily in front of my face right now, but they will check out for the, just those two breaks. They will not check out for Thanksgiving. Some, they can stay if necessary. Food will be limited. Same idea for spring break. They don't have to check out. They can leave, but food will be limited uh, during spring break. And that, by limited, they usually go to brunch hours um, those days. So I've added um, the web page for our uh, athletics, so you can take a look at that. It might give you a little bit more detail about their hours and availability. It's in chat. And I've also added the link for what to bring. And lastly, I just added a link of the academic calendar so that uh, parents can take, or families can take a look at future planning uh, for the rest of the semester. Next question is, um, do roommates participate in the same degree program? And what is the visitor policy? Uh, Melinda, you wanna take the roommate part and I'll take visitor. Yeah, for the roommate question, so um, generally, yes. Um, what we do is for our new cadets, we house roommates by your division. And so basically your divisional assignment, it's assigned by the Commandant's Office, but it's a smaller group within your major group. And so here at Cal Maritime, we have essentially three companies. So if you are an engineering student, doesn't matter if you're license track or FET or MET, you're in the engine group. And then if you're a business, business student or global studies, you're part of the MPM group. And then if you're marine transportation, you're part of the deck group. And so within those three companies, there are four smaller groups within that, and you're assigned to one of those smaller groups. So um, if you're not paired with someone that has the exact same major, you're going to be paired with someone that's within your company group. So whether if you're the MPM, deck, or 
um, engineering, you're going to have a roommate in that capacity. Um, sometimes the numbers are off because we have an odd number of students. And so you may be paired with someone that is in a different company than you, but that's because we need to try to keep our groups even. Um, but those are just one off cases. But generally, that's how we pair our roommates together for our new cadets coming in. Um, so oceanography, which is our newest uh, major, is part of MPM at this time. So if you are in oceanography, you will be with one of your MPM cohorts. Um, and uh, Melinda, while you're uh, talking about that, uh, there's a question. If you haven't been given a roommate name, does that mean it's only you in the room? Um, so right now we have not sent out any room assignment information. So you may be referring to something on Star Res. Over the summer, everyone had an opportunity to select a roommate. It wasn't a requirement, but it was optional. Um, so some folks went in and completed the process. Again, it wasn't required. So if you did not select a roommate, you should be receiving your room assignment email by the end of this week. And in there, we'll have details to your specific room location, which hall you're going to be in. And if, you're, if you do have a roommate, your contact information for your roommate will be listed as well. Thank you, Melinda. Lennon, you want to go back to the visitor yes. policy? Thank you. Yeah, so our guest policy. So um, I'll start with the policy and then I'll talk about the exemption days. So um, we do, we will be approaching this academic year with our same guest policy as we did last year, uh, which is essentially um, because of the steps the university takes to uh, make sure that everyone's compliant with the vaccination policies. And we have that data on all cadets, whether they live on campus or off campus, and or uh, the re remaining campus community due to the state's um, COVID compliance expectations, uh, we're able to allow all cadets to visit other cadets, but we do not allow off-campus persons to visit our halls during the academic year. Now, the exemptions for this are move-in day, um, checkout day, and typically, I think, just the parent and family weekend. Um, and so those are right now for the, at least the fall semester, the only exemptions I would have on paper. And, and the general idea is that we'll probably hold that policy until we no longer need to regularly test cadets for COVID. Um, and, and that's just right now we do have cadets who for different, uh, medical reasons and whatnot may be exempt from the, uh, from the vaccination requirement. But as long as, as the pandemic is still being treated as active and we are, we are needing to test cadets, we don't wanna open up our community to just invite a large number of persons onto the space who could be then putting unknowingly other cadets at risk. That doesn't mean that COVID's uh, not an issue. Uh, and so I'll, I'll kind of add to that is that we do have isolation spaces on campus. We do have protocols that provide meals to those persons if they do find that they need to isolate for a short period of time uh, on, on our on our campus. So um, there's a pretty solid protocol we have in place. It's been going strong for a couple of years now um, and that support is in place. So um, uh, we won't we don't typically require a cadet to go home, uh, but they will also have that option that if they are isolating or need to isolate, depending on their situation, they may elect to want to go home, but we have them work with their families to make that determination, but we are able and in a position to support every cadet who uh, needs that support during the academic year. Thank you. Um, you mentioned a 30 to 40 cadets per wing in upper res. Uh, can you kind of talk a little bit more detail about that setup? How many showers, how many sinks, you know, what is the traffic like yeah. uh, so, during the uh, day? Maddie, if you are uh, in a well-receptioned area, uh, you want to try to give that a shot. So Maddie was an RHO in Upper Residence Hall last year, so would have lived on the floor and, and shared the resources with everyone else. So she could probably speak best to uh, that experience. Just in regards to like the bathroom sinks and how all that goes together. This other question? Yeah, like sharing sharing that space. And how oh, many yeah. how many uh, sinks and shower stalls are in in these bathrooms gotcha, if you gotcha. remember yeah oh yeah 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 uh so upper res um 
there's about two restrooms per hall uh, for those double halls. Um, so in each restroom, there's going to be eight sinks with like these really huge mirrors. And I believe there's five stalls. Um, I do not know how many urinals because I do not use the boys restroom, but <laughs> um, as uh, living on the floors, I never really had a crowd issue. It was never really people fighting for space, uh, having to wait in a line. I never really had that issue. Just to the fluctuation of using it at different times. Uh, there's plenty enough space for the amount of people that are sharing it. Um, and I do believe there's four shower stalls, uh, which that can be crowded at times, but once again, not really an issue in regards to sharing it with others. Uh, it was always kept pretty well uh, maintained by the cleaning staff. Um, and then students also respected the space and took care of their own stuff, you know, made sure they kept their stuff out of the bathroom. You keep your own hygiene products inside your room and you just bring them over when you're going to go brush your teeth and, uh, you know, bring it back to your room when you're done. So it's a, it's a pretty simplistic, it sounds like it'd be chaotic with that many people, but it really, you know, we all know what we're doing. So it's a pretty well-run machine. <laughs> Thank you, Maddie. And I stepped away to share with uh, everyone that, I don't know if you can see it, but we are giving away uh, a caddy to each student for their bathroom needs. Uh, it will have some goodies for them, uh, mostly candy and, and school supplies type of goodies, not shampoo or, or bathroom uh, items. But I just wanted to share that with you and let you know that if you haven't already purchased one and it's on your uh yet to buy list, you can mark that off. Um, it'll be placed in every student's room when they arrive as a, a, a welcome for them. So I had to find a moment to share that. <laughs> um, if, oh, no, I, we answered that. Can, can they bring their bikes into the room? No. So there are bike racks, uh, multiple locations around campus. Um, and the residence halls, so they're, they're able to ride their bikes down to main campus if they're in McAllister, for example, which is a, a bit more up further up the hill. Um, it's a pretty short walk to and from campus. Um, if they're in upper res it's, and it's all stairs, uh, if they're bringing a bike and it doesn't have gears, I would strongly reconsider bringing that bike. If you've yet to make it to campus physically, um uh, uh, we we can we have quite a few hills so i would definitely encourage bringing a bike that has different settings that makes going uphill not an unbearable experience um but there are bike racks uh but no we, we do ask uh that they not bring their 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 bikes into the room one tracking outside inside like that uh just mud and, and dirt and everything but then also the impact on roommates um you know though the rooms are well sized space is limited and, and we don't necessarily need um, those other features. So it is against policy technically, we don't just ask, it is against policy to not have your bike in the room. Um, next question is how is laundry paid for? Is it coin operated or paid from a student account? That's right now it's coin. It's coin operated and then there's also an app by the washer machine company that you can download and put your credit card information and you can pay for it that way too. Thank you. Um, how do uh, students get their move-in time and when? So that will also be included in the room assignment email that will go out later this week. So in addition to your res hall assignment and your roommate information, you'll also have your designated move-in time slot. And so move-in this year is Sunday, August 21st, and we have a time frame between 7 a.m. and 2 p.m. And so all the new cadets will get a specific time slot for when they need to arrive on campus and move into the res halls. Each of the time slots are 30 minutes. Our first one is at 7 a.m. and our last time slot's at 2 p.m our office will automatically assign you a time slot. And again, that will be included in your email that you will get. And if you do have any conflicts or need another time, just respond to the room assignment email that you receive and we'll work with you on getting you a new time slot. But it is expected that we um, will have everyone checked in by two o'clock um, to get ready for the rest of the orientation week that will be happening. 
And once again, I put it in the chat, but when we say you, we are really referring to your cadet. <laughs> We're not reaching out to you for the same reasons that uh, Lennon mentioned earlier, uh, FERPA. So, and, and, and assume this is your cadet's campus email. So Correct. that's where really almost all information will go to their, their login. I think some details went out about how they can access that if they haven't done it recently. But that would be one thing I would definitely go and do with your cadet after you get off of this call is go and, and find that login. Um, if roommates decide to, together to stack beds, is that an option to create more space? Are there drawer shelves in the desk in the room? So um, it has been determined this summer that we will not be lofting beds. Um, and this is when they get beyond upper residence hall, there'll be a bit more flexibility due to the style of bed frame that they have in the other halls. But um, I think uh, we are following some guidance around um, uh, using attachments due to the fact that we are still the state of California and earthquakes are still a reality. Um, even though we don't have a season for that, we do wanna plan ahead. And so we've been hesitant to uh, do a, 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 the attachments. So we've actually removed all attachments from any bed frame that's not of that style. Now, in addition to that, um, uh, what they did, was set all the beds to one of the more like the one of the higher settings. It can be lowered uh, at request if need be, but we set it to one of the higher settings to allow for more space under the bed to allow for you to put items under there. So uh, I walked through. I'm six three, just to give an idea. I walked through uh, the rooms the other day with our facilities team to see what they had done with the settings, and um, it was probably about my hip, maybe a little under my hip. So I would say that's enough for easily. If you're thinking of like those big plastic bins or containers that you'd get at like a Target or a Walmart, uh, I'm, no commission, I don't get get a deal with them. Um, but if you were to pick up a, a plastic bin from one of one of those locations, they would slide under the bed without without issue. Um, most of them are, are all of them are set to where the dresser there's a, like a dresser two drawer option that could still slide under the bed. So, um, uh, but at this current time, there is not a lofting option for first year cadets. Um, we'll take the last two questions and open it up briefly for any verbal questions. And then I do need to share a little bit of information about orientation day. So um, is there a kitchen in Upper? And if so, uh, are there pans and such available for them to use and cook in Upper Res Hall? Yes. Um, all cadets have a required meal plan um, as per university policy. And so uh, they do have a meal plan and are able to bring food back up. Every room has a mini fridge in it with a microwave on top. Please do not bring your own miniature fridges. You will need to transport that home with you. So um, uh, these micro fridges are designed. They're in the room. There's probably only room for one per room. And so uh, they do share the mini fridge as well as the, the microwave. Um, most food can fully be consumed in, in the in the dining uh, facility, the area we call the marketplace. The cadets will call mess hall. Um, but then uh, for the kitchenette in in um, Upper Res, there is one as well in McAllister. They are like more like a mix of like I would say just hot top like hot plates as well as some like crock pot type options, but nothing or like a rice cooker, nothing really like an oven. There isn't like baking to, to occur. Um, part of that is that there, there isn't a purpose-built kitchen. This was more of an addition during COVID uh, when cadets couldn't eat at the marketplace to offer more flexibility for them to reheat their food or do other options. Um, so baking wise, no. Um, and upper res, but then um, for other heating options or cooking options, there are, but primarily all cadets should maximize using the meal plan that they've already paid for to get the most value out of their meal plan would be my encouragement. Thank you. And I think someone is looking for further clarification. Can they use bed risers so they have more space under their bed to store items? Is that a no still? Because that of would be a no. Yeah. So we wouldn't, we're, we're not using any bed rise, anything that is functionally an attachment. We are not using this year to uh, 
be it's not a, a pure regulation, but we're following some best practice of other colleagues and other campuses to avoid potential uh, earthquake uh, concerns. So for that reason, we are not using bed risers. And, and, and when you see the beds, there's like an attachment component that we used to utilize. We're not using an attachment that would allow for a higher stacking bed. So uh, in upper res, no, the, the bed frame and settings that are on the current bed frame are the only settings that could be used. Um, if there is a setting on the bed frame that's solidly in the room that is higher than what it's currently set at, that is allowed to use the singular bed frame at its highest setting. Thank you for that. Um, yes, there are microwaves and mini fridges, uh, um, a singular unit that has one microwave and my, one fridge. The fridge does have like a freezer section uh, and one per room is available to be shared by the roommates. I do want to be true to our original housekeeping comments. If there's anyone on this call who did not get a chance to write in their questions and wants to unmute and ask, please do so now. We'll hold that spot for you for a few seconds to do so. Are the kids allowed to bring a mattress topper? I saw somebody put that in the chat, but I don't know if it was answered yet. Yeah, yes, they can. Um, they can bring a mattress topper. Um, that's not a problem. Sorry if I missed that. I apologize. Thank you. It, for I think asking. it just came in. I oh, okay. Okay. Um, oh, there it is. Um, great. Um, I have a um, couple of things, if I may. Uh, one is we are um, really behind on getting photographs of your student that gets imprinted on their college ID that as a maritime school, we call a port pass. If your student has not yet um, provided that to us, I've put the link in. Would you please help us by requesting them to take care of that? Uh, we really, really need to have those ahead of time so we can um, we can um, code them to open the, your students' rooms or the, the uh, building in which they will reside. So please help us out with that. And um, I would like to thank our presenters um, for their time and their expertise um, and give them the option to get off the call while I um, kind of describe what to expect on the move-in day. So with that, um, I'm gonna, you know, I'm unmuted. So I'm gonna give a little clap for Lennon, Melinda and Maddie. Thank you for being with us this evening. You're welcome to stay on, but I, I wanna be respectful of your time. Uh, please hop off if you need to. And for the parents who uh, need to, or family members who need to leave, please uh, do so. I'll go over this again uh, at the next uh, call. But on the 21st, when you arrive, um, like Melinda said, if your time is seven o'clock, please arrive a little bit earlier. You'll park pretty close to our physical education and aquatic center. And we request you to come into the building where you will check in. Um, at check-in, you will be provided with a large box in which you, your student will collect all their uniform items. So all the way from caps and uh, shirts and pants and track suits and jackets and all of that good stuff. And they will have that box of items that they will need to bring to their room. And if your uh, vehicle is full and cannot accommodate another box, we will transport that for you. But if you can, you will take that box back to your car and be driving up to your designated res hall. So all of this needs to happen really quickly between your allotted uh, time as well a and about 30 to 40 minutes later uh, Lennon, Melinda, Miranda, Miranda are all going to be waiting for you to show up to receive you in the res halls so you'll have a short window of time to do all of this and get up there and while all of this is happening we will uh, we, we will have colleagues from various departments at a fair for you also in our uh, physical education and aquatic center to welcome you and share any information that you 
uh, need to have uh, for your success and for your cadet success. Um, and we are also going to have an open house at our um, our inclusion center. Also, that that's also in the same building. Um, and all of this, all 220 students need to be checked in and moved into their rooms between 7 a.m. and 2.30 p.m. Uh, because after that, you're going to um, make your way to our lower campus, which is where it, we have our auditorium. And um, our president will be anxiously and eagerly waiting to welcome you. Uh, that will be followed by uh, another session on sense of belonging, where you'll meet some folks who will share all the items um, that all the work they do outside the classroom to help build community. And then we will have our capping ceremony um, uh, at, uh, at five o'clock, which will culminate the day with the exception that your students will have an opportunity window of two hours to exchange any uniform items that don't fit. So if their pants are too big, too small, shirts are too large, too long, they'll have an opportunity to go back to the uh, physical education and aquatic center and our um, bookstore folks will be waiting to swap out anything that doesn't fit. Um, it's a lot. It's um, going to be an exciting, hectic day. Wear comfortable shoes. And I'm preparing a step-by-step uh, -step notification of how this day is going to go, which will be shared with you on August 15th. Uh, should you not get that by the 16th, please don't hesitate to email me and I can send it to you directly. That's my spiel. I, I hope it made sense and we'll do it again next Thursday or on Thursday uh, this coming week. Uh, same time, same place, same Zoom link. Uh, thank you for sticking around. And uh, once again, thank you to our presenters today. Have a wonderful Tuesday evening. Um, I'm, I'm looking at, uh, just to be clear, can they leave their belongings in the room over winter break and summer break? No. Yes to winter, no to summer. Correct. Um, all right. I think we got everything covered. Uh, once again, this time for real. Thank you very much and have a wonderful evening. Bye-bye. <laughs>